you must take back the streets. And you take back the streets by more cops, more prisons. I hope this crime bill, when it passes, the Biden-Hatch crime bill, as it becomes law, God willing, I hope that we will have ended once and for all this notion that somehow Democrats are weak on crime. The consensus is A, we must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask, what made them do this? They must be taken off the street. We all agree on that. Now we can find some fringe folks and left-wingers in my party who say, no, nah, that's not what we should do. It's unless we do something about that cadre of young people Tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without any conscience developing, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change their behavior, but they are in jail. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to this so-called crime prevention bill. Mr. Speaker, let us be honest, this is not a crime prevention bill. This is a punishment bill, a retribution bill, a vengeance bill. All over the industrialized world now, countries are saying, let us put an end to state murder, let us stop capital punishment. But here what we're talking about is more and more capital punishment. What we're discussing now is an issue where some of our friends are saying, we're not getting tough enough on the criminals. But my friends, we have the highest percentage of people in America in jail per capita of any industrialized nation on earth. We've beaten South Africa. We've beaten the Soviet Union. What do we have to do? Put half the country behind bars? Mr. Speaker, instead of talking about punishment and vengeance, let us have the courage to talk about the real issue. How do we get to the root causes of crime? How do we stop crime? And Mr. Speaker, I've got a problem. I've got a problem with a president and a Congress which allows five million children to go hungry, two million people to sleep out on the streets, cities to become breeding grounds for drugs and violence. And they say, we're getting tough on crime. If you want to get tough on crime, let's deal with the causes of crime. Let's demand that every man, woman, and child in this country have a decent opportunity and a decent standard of living. Let's not keep putting poor people into jail and disproportionately punishing blacks. Time of the gentleman has expired.